All right, guys, welcome to the Thursday product training podcast. Um, we're going to talk today a little bit about how to field underwrite when you're sitting with a client and they have medications and health challenges and things like that. So obviously you're going to complete your financial inventory sheet, um, which allows you to remember to ask those types of questions like their health and their medications in the past. Um, once we figure out what medications they take, that kind of triggers to know what kind of ailments they have. And sometimes some medications can be used for more than one thing. So we do have to ask some, some good questions when we're sitting with the client. So once you're going through the client worksheet, there's that section there that talks about their health and they're going to give you the medications. The best thing to do is just tell them to go grab the medications. Um, if you're doing an in-home, if you're doing a Zoom, you can do the same thing. Just tell them to go grab the medications so that way we're spelling them correctly. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to Google or we can use the insurance toolkits if we have it, but that's a, um, a paid um, subscription. So if, if you're just getting started, I wouldn't, you know, you don't have to invest in anything like that. Um, but you're going to Google the medications that the person takes. And then once you Google the medications, it usually tells you a couple different ailments. Some of them are just like, let's just say it's used for high blood pressure. It could be used for angina, some other things. So just ask them, once you Google what the medication is, ask them what they use it for. So if they tell you a medication and it's used for a couple of different things, you need to figure out what it, what they're using that for, okay? So then you're going to obviously write that down. If they have multiple medications, make sure you write them all down and you're going to Google all of them and ask them what they are using these medications for. You also want to ask them if they have been prescribed any medications that they're no longer using. See, sometimes people prescribe medications, they kind of forget that they, like, they're as needed or something like that. So make sure you ask any medications, including medications that they have been prescribed but maybe no longer take or don't need to take anymore because this is going to paint, the medications basically paint a picture of what their health is like. Also, if let's just say sometimes people forget like that an inhaler is a medication. So make sure that you ask them these questions like any inhalers. Ask them how often they get the inhalers filled. Because a lot of times what happens is, is people get an, an inhaler and maybe they have more than one inhaler, right? So obviously the more inhalers, the more chronic of the issue. If they have an inhaler that they've gotten and they only have it filled once a year or once every six months or something like that, it's obviously not a big problem. They just have it like on hand in case they should need it. But if they're getting an inhaler or more than one inhaler filled every single month, it's obviously more of a problem, which is going to maybe trigger us to maybe look at something a little bit more chronic, like chronic bronchitis or COPD, things like that, not just asthma. So make sure you're asking these questions, dig a little bit. I think sometimes people just kind of glaze over the medications and then they, they get committed to a product. And then all of a sudden it's like they have to start backpedaling like, oh, oh, that didn't work because they're take you know, they're on medications that maybe have them, you know, in a situation that their health is not going to allow them to get that, that particular product. So Google the medications, see what they're used for, ask them what they are using them for, because again, some medications are dual use. And then once you've done that, we're going to go over to the FFL agent hub. We have multiple cheat sheets on here that it can kind of explain to you, okay, so for instance, if somebody has COPD, we can go search COPD on there. So I'm going to actually click on here and go to um, where you can find these tools. So if you go to FFLAgentHub.com, which you should be able to see on my screen right now, um, you're going to go to the download section, which is the very first red tab at the top, okay? And then you can kind of scroll down. I believe it's like the third row, but it'll depend on how you see it in your um and your, your sheet there, but we have several cheat sheets. We have the whole life final expense cheat sheet, which is just a short cheat sheet. It has just the basic ones that you're going to come across most of the time. Then we have the whole life final expense cheat sheet, which has a long, it has a w way more ailments on there. And then we have the term cheat sheet. So depending upon age, what type of lead they filled out, things like that will determine where we've got to go. So let's click on the, the whole life final expense cheat sheet, the long one. Okay. And so what we can do is it usually just opens up a PDF. The cool part about it is you can do a search on a PDF. So if you right click or um, control F it, or you can, um, yeah. So if you control F or right click on it, sometimes you, there's a little search button at the top, depending on how if you're using it. But if I type in COPD, okay, it's going to take me, I might have to click the arrow to go right to the COPD, but it's going to take me to COPD. 
And it's going to show me straight across who's going to take COPD and who's not going to take COPD. So, for instance, we're back to that inhaler thing. Somebody takes multiple inhalers, they're going to classify this as a COPD case, even if they say, no, I just have really bad asthma. Well, because they're getting these multiple inhalers filled a month, that's going to be a more chronic situation. So we're going to go to COPD, or we can even sometimes, like chronic bronchitis is on here, we can go to type. So we can type in the ailment on this cheat sheet. Okay, so that's the cool part about it. Also, on this cheat sheet, if you're sitting with someone who is maybe on the heavier side, we have the the build charts on here. So so if you're looking at somebody, that you don't need them to tell you that they're overweight. You can physically see that they're overweight, you know? Um, and you can go to the build charts on here, check the build chart. If they're outside the build chart, and this is a final expense plan that you're, you're looking at for this family, then you just know that if they're outside the build chart with these carriers, you're going to have to slide over here to Aetna because they don't have a build chart. Okay, so... Again, Aetna's the only one. They don't have a bill chart, so they're okay with whatever weight the person is. But again, these are on here. So that's this is preventing you from taking applications on people who wouldn't ever get the, the coverage anyway. So for instance, if someone has COPD, you can see that America is not taking COPD. It says, it says it's not going to do it, right? So you can see, all right, well, that one will be eliminated. I know that's one of our go-tos every single time. So we just know that we got to pivot to somewhere else. So we don't have to co overcommit to a carrier when we know it's not going to go through there, okay? And again, first thing we're always trying to do is get the client a level benefit. If they absolutely can't get a level benefit anywhere, then we're going to pivot to the graded, which would be the AIG or maybe the American Amicable ROP, or even the Aetna ROP. ROP is the exact same thing as the grade it with AIG, just so everybody knows. It's just that they might pay you a little bit better. So if all pieces are equal, we want to get paid more than obviously not. Um, so this is how you field underwrite. You check the Google, you check the prescriptions on Google, see what they're used for, ask the client what they're using them for. Then take those ailments that the client has given you and go to the cheat sheet. Now, there is some sort of, there's a little caveat here. If, if the client has multiple ailments and they are all saying yes on the cheat sheet, you're going to need to probably call the in-home hotline for a recommendation because sometimes multiple ailments, and again, you're only going to know this because you've experienced it. Like the, the, that's why we have that in-home hotline because you have about eight people who answer that. It all rings to their phone. Eight people who answer that who have plenty of experience and know that multiple amps. So, so it might be a combination of, you know, for instance, like a smoker diabetic with high blood pressure, America is not real keen on it. So we know, like we, we kind of understand sometimes it's an age thing. So if they have multiple ailments, but they're all saying, yes, you want to call the hotline just to make sure that you're getting the best recommendation. So that way you're not again, telling the client that you can get them this product. But then again, you can't because they have multiple ailments going on. So I'm going to show you how to get to the hotline. You're going to go back to the agent hub and you can save this in your phone too. Um, you're going to go to the in-home presentation section and then there's a picture about part way down that says FFL agent hotline for use of all FFL national agents. Um, we'd love to take calls for like all of FFL, but obviously that would take up a lot of time. So please just FFL national agents. Um, but this is where you would call the hotline. And here's how you call. It's very simple. You just start dialing the phone number and tell your client that you need to just call your um, help desk for a recommendation. You think you know what products will be best, but you just want to make sure you're giving them the best recommendation. And as you're saying this, you're actually calling the phone number. It rings to about eight of us. You basically are just going to give us the Reader's Digest version of what's going on. Sitting here with Miss Mary and Mr. Paul, very, very awesome couple. Um, they actually put a request in on the internet for basic life insurance. Please give us a little, please let us know what type of lead they filled out without saying, yeah, they filled out a mortgage protection lead. That does not sound right, right? They filled out a form about mortgage protection. Just, just cut out the word lead, okay? Um, they filled out a request online about basic insurance. So now we know it's an internet lead, okay? Um, neither one of them are smokers. They don't have any health. They don't have, um, any life insurance right now. So now we're, we're kind of understanding what's going on here when you give us a call. Um, Miss Mary, she was hospitalized about a year ago for a knee replacement. 
She does take blood thinners right now for that. Um, but she, other than that, perfect health. And um, her husband, Mr. Paul, he takes high blood pressure. He does take um, insulin for diabetes. And um, he takes a cholesterol pill as well. So we're just kind of giving us a broad understanding of exactly what's going on here at this house and what, 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 what the picture looks like with their health so we can give you a recommendation. Um, again, if it's multiple ailments, we need to know all of that. We might even say, hey, um, how long have they been diabetic? We may ask you some questions because with Mutual of Omaha, here's what we know. If the person was diagnosed with diabetes prior to age 50, all Mutual of Omaha plans are out of the, out of the question. Again, the cheat sheet tells you this stuff, so you don't have to know everything about everything. The best way to understand product knowledge is to get in front of somebody, see Mr. Paul and Miss Mary, see their, their interactions, see what's going on, see how they, they tell us their, their ailments, how they tell us about their prescriptions, how they, seeing a live situation is how we figure out this product stuff. And so that's why it's super important to have a lot of appointments, get in front of a lot of people, and use this, the resources that we have, right? The, the cheat sheet and the in-home hotline. And understand as you go, you don't need to know everything, but live situations will help your memory remember this for the future. So utilize the tools that we have in place. Um, and then we'll give you a rec. When you call the in-home hotline, we'll give you a recommendation. We'll tell you exactly which plan is going to be best for them, giving them the most coverage, and hopefully making sure that they get, a, get approved as long as they've told us everything that, that is going on here. Um, so this is how you do, this is how you feel to underwrite. Um, pretty simple. Use Google. There is insurance toolkits.com, which you can kind of implement these things and it'll spit it out and tell you which plans are best for them. There is a subscription. I'm, I don't know exactly what it is, but um, they do have all of our carriers in there. But for now, while you're just getting started, use the cheat sheet, have it downloaded on your computer because you can search up the ailments by using control F and use the in-home hotline to call from every single appointment. And I usually say, unless they're sitting there ready to rip and you know exactly which plan, they don't have a lot of ailments, use the in-home hotline because sometimes just that, author just that authority saying, go with AmeriCo Eagle, right? You know, do the E app for AmeriCo Eagle. Sometimes just that authority makes the sale happen and makes the, the client move forward. So guys, I hope this was helpful. This is how you feel to underwrite and um, we'll catch you next week on Thursday. Thank you. Mm -hmm.